Hello and welcome to Digi Shala. I am Dr. Priyanka Sharma, working as Professor and Head, IT and Telecommunication Department, Raksha Shakti University, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Today, I will be talking on cyber threats in digital payments. Now, knowledge of digital payment and its threat is need of the hour due to Digital India revolution. As recent de uh, demonetization drive, we have moved from cash to less cash and cashless economy. And the success of this transition depends on how well we work, how hacker works and how bankers work. Today, we shall be touching upon the types of conventional payment system, types and advantages of digital payment, cyber world, cyber crime and self-protection drive. Let me start with the payment system. A payment system is any system used to settle financial transaction through the transfer of monetary value and that includes institutions, instruments, people, rule, procedures, standards and technologies that make an exchange possible. A barter system is an old method of exchange. Here goods and services were exchanged. But the problem was in barter system it was hard to put a tag or a prize money on the things like it may be rice, it may be weapons etc. So money was thought to be a good form of payment considering the limitations of barter system or we can call it as commodity exchange. But the new concept of this money had to be something like money should be accepted by others, money should be assigned some value, money should be carried easily and it should be made of some strong material that couldn't be handed from person to person. Now, With the advent of computers and electronics communication like mobile, a large number of alternative electronic payment system have emerged. Digital payment in fact is a new way of payment which is made through digital modes. Here payer and pay both use digital modes to send and receive money, thus it is also known as electronic payment. No hard cash is involved in this process. All the transactions are completely online and it thus becomes an instant and convenient way to make payments. Advantages of digital payments include they are easy and convenient merely with mobile phone, Aadhaar number, Aadhaar card, e-wallets we can use this thing for payment. We can pay or send money from anywhere at any time. Even discounts we can get from government and companies as they encourage digital payment. The records are always written. Transactions are automatically recorded in our passbook or in our app. They are less risky if we carefully and wisely use them. Like for example, if our credit card, debit card, etc. gets stolen, we should report to the particular bank and call helpline number if required. But every coin has two sides. There are certain drawbacks also of digital payments they face or non-technical person face some difficulty in using digital cards or whatsoever the method they are using. They may be belonging to group of farmers, workers etc. Second risk we may consider is of data theft. Our card may be stolen, our data may be stolen, hackers may hack the servers and they may use this information for some illegal purpose. And third, as a human being, the risk is of overspending because we feel I am having lot of money in my account and I go on spending. So before going further or before discussing cyber threats to this payment system which are online, let us see how many digital payment methods we use in our day to day life. Let me start with banking cards. The varieties of cards are available like credit card, debit card, prepaid card. Another type of payment system in digital world is AEPS Aadhaar enabled payment system and here the customer requires only an Aadhaar number to make payments to any merchant. Just we need to link our Aadhaar number with our bank accounts. No need for signature, bank account details or any password but it will be using a fingerprint and thus it becomes a secure because it's very difficult to forge you or to duplicate our fingerprints. The third method is Unified Payment Interface. It is a payment mode which is used to make fund transfer through the mobile apps, mobiles we all have and can transfer funds between two accounts using UPI apps. The fourth one is also an interesting one that is mobile wallets. 
we all carry physical wallets in different colors, but now we will carry our mobile wallets and it is not difficult to carry because we are carrying our mobile. It has become a part of our life, a part of our body. Also this can be done with smartphone, tablet or smart watch. We can link credit card or debit card information in mobile device to mobile wallet application or we can transfer money online to mobile wallet. Another type of digital payment is bank prepaid cards. This card is used by financial institution that is preloaded with funds and it works like a normal credit card. But the difference is that instead of buying something with borrowed funds through credits, we buy things with the funds that we have already paid and which is ours. Another type of digital payment is also known as points of scale or point of purchase. It is the place where sales or purchase is made. On macro level, a POS, point of sale, may be a mall, a market or city. And on micro level, retailer consider a pause to an area where a customer completes a transaction such as checkout counter. Another popular method of digital payment is internet banking, which we all may be using. Internet banking is also known as e-banking or virtual banking. It is an electronic payment system that enables customers of a bank or other financial institution to conduct a range of financial transactions through any financial subscribed institution website. Now overview of types of financial frauds which are prevalent in cyber world. The first one which we shall consider or which we shall talk is on identity fraud. In identity fraud, someone falsifies his or her identity for the reason for stealing some information, some confidential information for stealing money. And then with the help of this confidential information, they give instructions to bank for different money transactions like money transfer, money withdraw. Next one is phishing. Phishing is something like internet banking client receives an email which are tricky in nature. They ask for account login, they ask for password, they ask for personal details to some website or they may come from some website which look legal. For example, a bank's website is abc.com and we receive an email ID from abci.com. So we should be careful here. We should not give our personal details because then these details may be exploited to steal money from our account. Wishing. Here the victim gets some calls on mobile phones and it acts like as a bank official. It gathers details again of credit card, debit card, including OTP, which are sent on mobiles, and then again these details may be used for some frauds. Another fraud is card fraud. This fraud starts from theft of bank card, or it may be lost, it may be stolen. Whatsoever thief makes unauthorized purchase with this card until we notify our bank. So we should be careful again here. As soon as we lose our card or the card is stolen, we should inform the bank to take appropriate action. Another fraud is scheming. This involves stealing information of a credit card during a legal transaction. Here the criminal swipe the card through an electronic device and this device is also known as scheming device. This device records all the information which are there on our card, it is in magnetic strip and this information can be used further by criminals, by hackers, by attackers of cyber world for online purchasing or even to reproduce the card. So duplicate card and we may not be knowing that there is some other card also which looks similar to us and we are losing money. Another type of cyber fraud which we can happen in digital payment system is known as counterfeit cards. Here the fraudsters steal the card's information to make fake cards or sell the card information. The victim rarely knows as he still has the real card in his possession. Another type is advanced fee scams. These scams are usually perpetrated through a letter, email or phone call offering a large sum of money. And to initiate this transaction, we are asked to send again the details of our bank account, administration fee or some IDs and password. International lottery fraud is also a common type of fraud. We should not be trapped into this because they show a good faith. They send a check 
and they instruct us to deposit in this account so that they can send the money of the lottery. But what happens? They express a sense of urgency. We do it in a faster way to get the money. And before we can complete this, our check is bounced and we get no money. In fact, whatever we have deposited as a transaction fee, etc., etc., is lost. Another is fake price, that we get some price which is not existing in the world and they asked us to send a check or pay a nominal fees like shipping or handling charge so we should not be trapped in this also. Another type of threat may be something like wills and legacy. A letter or mail may be describing, may be mentioning that someone has died and mentioned your or my name in his will and usually he will impose himself as the lawyer of that person. So again, they may ask an advance fee, a transaction fee, etc. Another technique of fraud is known as keyloggers. They may be software keyloggers, they may be hardware keyloggers. They are the softwares or hardwares which captures all the keyboard inputs to find any credentials, like in cyber cafe. So we should be also careful when we visit some public place where computers are there, like airport, railway stations, or cyber cafe. Another simple technique which human beings use is known as shoulder surfing. Here, or this attack is normally associated with observing the personal identification number, PIN, or password, or ID. And a most sophisticated variant uses here is a CCTV or closed circuit television. Another type of fraud is email spoofing. There, the criminal will use a falsified mail ID, like I may say I am a bank manager or I am a CEO of any company, and take again the confidential information which can be used again for some financial fraud. ATM fraud, as we have seen schemers, their schemers can be used or criminals in fact are using schemers to record the card details and cameras to record the PIN details. Hacking is a popular term. Here, the attackers are gaining unauthorized access to a data in a system or computer for a financial gain. So let us see what are the most important points or issues we should focus while paying on digital mode or while doing digital transactions. First, we need to keep all our personal information, identity cards and bank cards safe at all the times. We should keep our PIN number secret. We should not write PIN number down or store them with bank cards. We should never give bank account details or any other security information to any person or website unless the identity and authenticity can be verified. We should not be distracted when we use our bank card or when we are in ATM. We should report immediately if something wrong or something suspicious is happening in ATM. We should not allow anyone to use our card. We should also check monthly credit card statements and other bank statements carefully for any suspicious transaction. We should promptly re report our theft or loss of our data. 24 hours helpline is there. We should also take care when we make payment on internet. We should not disclose our card verification value or if we disclose, it should be only on secure website. We should be careful while signing any financial contract. We should read the small print carefully and ask for clarification and advice from different sources if needed. We should be beware of calls, letters, emails, faxes, spams, etc., which are asking for our help to place huge sum of money in overseas bank. We should be suspicious of any job advertisement by spam or any email or any illegal company. If the job involves handling money receiving or transferring funds or payment, it should be reported as fact check scam. We should not reply to any spam or unsolicited email that promises us some benefit. In case of protecting card, we should sign our new card as soon as we receive it. We should safely destroy our card pin advice which we send immediately. We should not tamper with our card. We should not disclose our card number, card pin, or any card security tips except for making card to payments. In the case of protecting a pin, which is very important, we should never write down or otherwise record our pins 
or any security details which can be understood by someone else. We should destroy the card pin advice as soon as possible. Yeah, we should also choose our pin wisely. It should not be a random number like 123 or ABC or your name or your family member's name. Actually, there are three types of passwords or pin, random, hard and soft. So we should be always using characters or a mix of characters and alphabets and uh, numbers and some special characters for keeping our safe pin. We should not disclose this pin number to any mail order payments or while we are paying for some goods or services over telephone and through internet. So these are certain tips and suggestions we can make use in our day-to-day -day life for safer digital payments.